She's screaming over there. She said, cornball, uh-uh, no. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 shadiest Wendy Williams moments. Excuse me, I just said I'm a fan, but we have to call a spade a spade. I mean, I like them. I, I really do like them, but her, there's something about her. That's it? That's it? These are your people? These are your countrymen? And that's all you do? For this list, we're looking at moments when this talk show host gave some of her hottest takes on the latest celebrity gossip. Is Wendy spot on or does she take things too far? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, an awkward interview with Karuchi Tran. Over many episodes of her show, Wendy covered the long relationship between this Claws actress and Chris Brown and wasn't exactly nice in the way she spoke about Tran. I mean, we didn't know who you were before you were with Chris. And so, you know, you stayed and you put up with it. But now, Chris, Karuchi hasn't been with you for two years. In multiple Hot Topic segments, Wendy victim blamed Karuchi for staying with Brown for so long and even called her a, quote, thought who was after a dollar in a now deleted video. When Tran appeared on the show for an interview, things started smoothly enough with discussion of Claws and Tran's dedication to body positivity. I, I want to relay a message to embrace yourself. We're not perfect. You don't need to be perfect. We are okay as we are, and we don't need to enhance ourselves. Unfortunately, Wendy clearly just wanted gossip on Chris Brown and relentlessly asked questions about him that made Tran visibly uncomfortable. Hey. Was he throwing rocks at your window? Was he ringing your doorbell? Um. Th that did happen before, but we're not gonna go into detail with that. No. Wendy even outright asked if she was abused, earning an awkward, huh? from Tran. Number nine, insulting Beyonce. When discussing Beyonce's HBO documentary, Life is But a Dream, Wendy said she was such a big fan that she'd watch, even if she already knew everything that would be in it. Even if she tells us that story about how her daddy used to have them run in high heels again, I'm watching. Unfortunately, what seemed like a genuinely supportive and uplifting moment was ruined when the talk show host couldn't help but include a mean little jab at Beyonce's expense. Wendy's caveat for watching the documentary was getting past what she described as Beyonce's poor speaking skills going so far as to suggest that she sounded uneducated. Excuse me, I just said I'm a fan, but we have to call a spade a spade. Talk about rude and unnecessary. Honestly. And we really do have the closed captioning just for times like that. Number eight, calling John Legend unsexy. When John Legend was named People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive in 2019, Wendy Williams did not agree in the slightest. She admitted he was cute, but thought he was definitely not fit for such a title. All right, John Legend. <laughs> but not the sexiest man alive. Doubling down on the shade, Wendy offers an alternative by bringing up an image of Jason Momoa to show her audience, prompting many audience members to cheer in agreement. <laughs> While it's unlikely the opinion of one person was a massive blow to John Legend's self-esteem, it still wasn't a very nice thing for her to say. We're pretty sure she wouldn't have appreciated being in his shoes. All right, but congratulations, Jonathan. Number seven, no sympathy for Meghan Markle. When Meghan Markle opened up about the anxiety that came with becoming part of the British royal family, Wendy Williams did not feel sorry for her in the least. Meghan, don't be surprised that the paparazzi are everywhere. Of course, because you're now a royal. They weren't following you when you were on suit. We didn't even know who you were. Markle was having a difficult time adjusting to the constant scrutiny, as well as the scorn and ridicule from British tabloids. Yes, you did. <laughs> you knew exactly what you were doing. However, Wendy argued that she didn't deserve sympathy because she must have anticipated how the media would treat her. Wendy later says she likes Meghan and Harry, but then manages to throw more shade right afterwards. I mean, I like them. I, I really do like them. But her, there's something about her. Number six, surgically enhanced shade. In 2013, Lil' Kim got plastic surgery, and Wendy Williams was not a fan. When the image of Lil' Kim's face appears on screen, Wendy almost chokes on her drink trying to contain her laughter. It's really quite the dramatic response for a fairly unremarkable image. 
Wendy then goes on to say that the surgery makes her face look so tight it could be popped like a balloon. It's filled so tight now, Kim, it looks like a pin would just pop you. Williams claims to be on Lil' Kim's side, calling the media's nasty coverage unfair, but continues to make snide comments, being the problem she's pretending to criticize. Kim, in my mind, I know your goal was always to look like Latoya Jackson. You've out latoya Latoya in your new look. I just, and, and don't belay photoshopping, belay your plastic surgeon, girl. Number five, Kylie's pregnancy. While rumors were flying that Kylie Jenner was pregnant in 2017, Wendy Williams was already thinking about the potential baby's future. Look, there's something going there's something going down in the DM. Based on speculation that Kylie was acting as a surrogate for her sister Kim, Wendy seems relieved for the baby's sake that this would mean the baby won't be born with a thin upper lip like Kylie used to have. The kid won't be born with a thin top lip? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Dedicated fans of The Wendy Williams Show might notice some additional camera operator shade that the show is known for. Just as Wendy starts talking about Kylie's thin lips, the camera cuts to an audience member who appears to have thin lips herself. Not even Wendy's own audience is safe from the shade. Number four, calling Madonna a grandma. She's screaming over there. She said, cornball, uh-uh, no. <laughs> who is that co-host? Stand up. When Madonna began dating one of her much younger backup dancers, Akla Malik Williams, Wendy Williams, no relation as she is quick to point out, thought something didn't look right. She said that it was awkward that Madonna was dating someone just a few years older than her daughter Lourdes, calling the singer a quote, old grandma at 61 years old. And there's old grandma, oh booed up with a 26 year old. Wendy also went on to say, from one mature woman to another, that younger men like Akhla Malik are better suited for one night stands, not serious relationships. She's become that old lady I feel bad for. Just cause I don't think that she understands it's okay to grow older gracefully. We're not sure Madonna asked for your advice, Wendy. Number three, a fake as hell injury. While practicing for a dance number on Dancing with the Stars, Christy Brinkley sustained a hard fall that resulted in a fractured wrist and shoulder. What I see is a 65-year-old hot stuff who looks like if you're gonna fracture anybody, you should have said the tailbone. Cause I don't see, I don't see a wrist and a shoulder being fractured. But that was real cute. Her daughter Sailor stepped in to dance in her mother's place in a move many saw as heartwarming but Wendy Williams saw it as a straight-up conspiracy. Watching the video of Brinkley injuring herself, Wendy explained her improbable theory that Brinkley faked the injury in order to boost her daughter's modeling career. You know, I'm gonna walk around looking hot and sexy, and then I'm gonna play like I broke something. Brinkley was shocked by the accusation, especially because she had been on the Wendy Williams show before and considered the two friends. <laughs> Do you have a um, message terrible. for Wendy? My message to Wendy is it's so much more fun to be kind. Yes. Woo! Try it. Number two, a small donation of $500,000. During the tragic and devastating Australian bushfires in 2019 and 2020, Australian couple Nicole Kidman and Keith Urban generously donated $500,000 to a wildlife relief fund. In response, all Wendy Williams had to say was, That's it? That's it? These are your people? These are your countrymen, and that's all you do? She figured the donation, which she saw as a measly $250,000 each, was nothing in proportion to the couple's large joint income, and that they, as Australians, should have donated much more. There were non-Australian people who donated a million dollars, right? I think Miley Cyrus is one of them. She donated a million bucks. It's bizarre to see anyone rationalize half a million dollars as a small donation, especially when it's coming from one couple and not a big corporation. And no matter the amount, any donation is respectable if it's for a good cause. Where do the Urbans get off with 500,000 <laughs> simple dollars? I don't mean to judge. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number one, the shade that launched an infamous feud. Whitney, Whitney, Whitney. Wendy, Wendy, Wendy. Oh my gosh. Oh 
my lord, have I waited for this day. Wendy Williams has always been fixated on celebrity gossip, and early in her career, her favorite celeb to talk about was Whitney Houston. Houston wasn't the biggest fan of Wendy, but agreed to do an interview on a radio show in 2003. And after years of built-up tension, this interview officially started the feud between Wendy and Whitney. I was a full-blown cocaine addict, so well, I... Your I problem, not mine. Move on. Well, you know, that was my problem, I Whitney. You helped yourself. Did you ask God to help you? And no, I, ma I managed, thank God, because I have a good man. They both acted hostile throughout the interview, but Wendy kept pressing her for more information about Houston's personal life, from her relationship to her drug habits. You are very defensive, Whitney. I have to be, Wendy. You talk about me every Day. Houston blamed Wendy's constant discussion of her for her defensive attitude. Whitney Houston later vowed to never appear on The Wendy Williams Show, and stuck to her word. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.